All right, this is Tim Bedley, and we're going to be learning how to do division of fractions today. Uh, I'm basically going to first explain to you how to do division of fractions, and then after that I'm going to explain to you why we do it that way. So first let's take a look at uh, some simple division of fraction problems. How about if we do 1 fourth divided by 2 thirds? Okay, first thing you need to know is that we cannot divide fractions. We have to convert this division problem into a multiplication problem. So we're going to rewrite the problem as 1 fourth. The first fraction stays exactly the way you see it. And then we're going to change it to multiplication. But on this second fraction, we're going to take the reciprocal of that fraction and write it down. Now the reciprocal means that we flip the fraction upside down. So 2 thirds goes upside down of the reciprocal to 3 halves. Then we simply multiply straight across, like we've always done with the multiplication of fractions. So we go 1 times 3 is 3, and 4 times 2 is 8. So 1 fourth divided by 2 thirds is equal to 3 eighths. All right, let's do another one like that. Uh, how about if we do 2 fifths divided by 3 tenths, okay? So we're going to, again, copy the first fraction just as you see it. 2 fifths stays as 2 fifths. The second fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to call that 10 thirds, flipping the 3 tenths upside down, the reciprocal of 3 tenths. And then uh, we're going to multiply and get 20 over 15. Now we have another situation right here. 2 times 10 is 20, 5 times 3 is 15. And that is that uh, we have the an improper fraction where the top number is larger than the bottom number. And I can't leave it that way. Most teachers don't want to see improper fractions as your answer. So we have to do this as a division problem to convert it to a mixed number. So 20 divided by 15 is my problem. We have to ask how many 15s are there in 20? Well, the answer is 1. There's 1 15 in 20. So the answer is one whole number. And then what would the remainder be when I do 20 divided by 15? Well, the remainder is 5. And we leave our same denominator of 15. Now, I'm not quite finished yet because 5 fifteenths can be simplified. So the answer is actually 1 for the whole number. I can divide 5 by 5, and I can divide 15 by 5 as well. And that's how I simplify that, by dividing by the greatest common factor. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. So my final answer is 1 and 1 third. Now this problem can actually be done in a simpler way if you know how to what I do what I call cross-reducing. And so let's write the problem again down here that we ended up with as 2 fifths times 10 thirds. Okay, rather than doing the multiplication straight across to start, I'm going to look diagonally at this number and this number, the 2 and the 3, and ask myself, can I reduce or simplify the 2 and the 3? Is there any way I can divide 2 and 3 by the same number? And uh, I don't think I can because I can only divide 2 by 2 to get a smaller number. I can only divide 3 by 3, and so there's no common number that I can divide both of those by. Um, and then I look diagonally across this way as well, 5 and 10. Is there a number I can divide both of those by to simplify? And of course there is. Uh, 5 can be divided by 5 and so can 10. So I'm going to change the 5 to a 1 because 5 divided by 5 is 1. I'm going to change the 10 to a 2 because 10 divided by 5 is 2. Now when I multiply I'm doing the 2 times this 2 because the 10 has gone. 2 times 2 is 4, and then I'm multiplying this 1 because the 5 has gone. 1 times 3 is 3, and that's also an improper fraction, but it's a lot easier at this point because I do 4 divided by 3. 3 goes into 4 one time, remainder 1, and I keep the same denominator, 1 and 1 third. So you can see by cross-reducing, by reducing diagonally or simplifying diagonally, before I do the multiplication, I end up with a simpler uh, way of getting the answer at the end. All right, what happens if you have to do a division problem by a whole number? 
or use whole numbers in division of fraction problems. Let's take a look at that type of problem next. So what if we had uh, 3 fourths divided by 5? How would we do that problem? Well, 5 is equal to 5 over 1. Uh, that's the same thing as 5 divided by 1. 5 divided by 1, of course, is 5. So 5 and 5 wholes, or 5 ones, is the exact same thing. That gives me two fractions to work with now. Remember, I copy the first fraction, 3 fourths, and I multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction, so that becomes 1 fifth. Remember to look diagonally to see if you can reduce it all. We've got 3 and 5. We've got 1 and 4. Uh, I don't see any way to divide any of those by the same number. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply. 3 times 1 is 3. 4 times 5 is 20. And there's no way to simplify 3 twentieths because I, I can only divide 3 by 3 and I can't divide 20 by 3. And so the answer is 3 twentieths. What if the whole number is in the other position, is in the first spot? What if it's 6 divided by 1 third? Okay, let's take a look how we do this. Again, the 6 becomes 6 over 1 because that's 6 wholes. And then I'm going to copy this fraction as my first fraction. 6 ones stays as 6 ones. I'm going to change this to the reciprocal. 1 third times or becomes 3 ones. Uh, and I multiply by the reciprocal. No way to cross reduce these. So I have 6 times 3 is 18. 1 times 1 is 1, and 18 over 1, just like 6 over 1 is 6, 18 over 1 is equal to 18. So my answer to 6 divided by 1 third is 18. And if you really think about it, that makes sense. How many 1 thirds are there in 16? Well, there's 3 1 thirds in every whole, and so there are 16 1 thirds, excuse me, 18 1 thirds in 6 wholes. All right, now to an even more complicated problem. How are we going to divide mixed numbers? What if we have 1 and 1 fourth divided by 2 and a half? This is not too tough of a problem, but what we have to do first, this is actually going to take two steps to get it to the point where we want it to be. 1 and 1 fourth, I'm going to change into an improper fraction. I cannot do my division or multiplication using these mixed numbers like this. I'm going to change it to improper fractions. The way I do that is I multiply 4 times 1, and then I add 1 to get my numerator on my number. And so 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So 1 and 1 fourth is equal to 5 fourths, divided by, let's keep it as division right now, and change this to an improper fraction. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. That's equal to 5 halves. Now remember, we have two division, uh, we have a division problem with two fractions. We have to rewrite this because we cannot divide fractions as a multiplication problem. 5 fourths times the reciprocal of 5 halves, which is going to be 2 fifths. And then you can probably see that I can cross reduce. This 5 and 5 can both be divided by 5. So that's equal to 1 and 1. And the 4 can be divided by 2, and so can the 2. That's 1 and 2. So I end up with 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. So 1 and 1 fourth divided by 2 and 1 half is equal to 1 half. Now, real quickly, I'm going to show you the justification for why this works. Uh, let's take a division problem that you already know how to do. 12 divided by 2. 12 divided by 2, of course, is equal to 6. But let's do this as a fraction problem. 12 ones times, let's flip this one and get 1 half. 12 times 1 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. So you can see that uh, even on a simple regular old division problem, we, we could still do it by flipping and multiplying. And that shows you why this works. So that's division of fractions. I hope you learned something today. Thank you very much for watching.